So we're heading into a new year, which means another year of suffering in school. Yeah. I know we're all being delusional and saying that. This year is gonna be all year. But you know, we said that the year before, so. These are five study habits that you need to break and how to fix them to ensure that you get that academic comeback this year. Bad habit number one, stop overlooking the little things. Before an assignment, you know, we like to think it's all peaceful and relaxing because there's no assessment. But until that assessment anxiety kicks in, then we do something. We've all been there. But if we want to make our study experience smooth and effective, we have to take care of what I like to call the little things. One, get good sleep. Oh, uh, you know what, if I just study for this until like 2 a.m. and drink monsters all night, I think I'll be fine. No, no, you won't be fine. Prioritizing sleep is actually one of the best things you could do for yourself to start being more consistent and productive. While you may feel more productive staying up late, it's actually doing less for you than you imagine, and you'll definitely struggle concentrating and remembering the things that you are revising for. Study is a lot more enjoyable when you have the energy and the motivation to do it, and you'll oftentimes finish work a lot quicker and to a much higher standard, allowing you to have more time to do other things and more easily balance out school and life. Two, get homework done quick. Something I always do to maximize study time is get my homework done as early as possible. Most of the time, my homework isn't even done at home, and I get it done and out of the way in the library, during lunch breaks, or on the way to and from school. You don't want things to pile up and have to worry about overdue homework and your assignment on top of that. That's not to say that you should be rushing your homework though. In the end, that homework is what's reinforcing and helping you recall the content that you've been learning in class, helping you more easily ease into your assessment. The point I'm making is you shouldn't be avoiding homework and you should get it done as soon as you can. The less workload you have, the more time you can study, or more importantly, do things you actually enjoy. Three, be proactive. As I said before, assessment anxiety is no joke and is something that you should not be waiting for. Don't wait for the assessment notification to come before you start studying and making notes. Something as simple as keeping your work neat, organized, and easy to refer to, making summaries of lessons, or writing down notes when you hear important ideas are all things that will make studying much easier in the long run. You could even go that step further and quiz yourself or do little revision sessions after every lesson or after every unit, which will definitely pay off and make studying for assessments and exams a lot more efficient. The more you do for yourself now, the more productive your studying sessions will be in the future. It's these little things that make studying less dreadful and more beneficial to you. Taking care of the small stuff works on the same logic as if, you know, if you start eating more mindfully and working out, you'd see the benefits in your health. All in the same way as if you had good sleep, got your work done on time, and you're being proactive, you'd see the results in your study performance. Bad habit number two, stop cramming. You ever just see that like one week on your calendar that's just like filled with four different assessments? Yeah, me too. With every single assessment block, I used to get overwhelmed and lost, not knowing where to start or what to prioritize. Time organization is a must when you have a heavy workload. One of the biggest tips that I could give is to schedule realistically. Don't be the person to overschedule everything because we all know, you know, you're not gonna follow that. Give yourself some leeway between things because most of the time, things don't go to plan. You might sleep in, watch that show for too long, or you just might not have a good day. So give yourself some flexibility. That's not to say that you should under-schedule though and not be organized enough. Find the sweet spot between what's easily accomplishable and what's mentally impossible. On top of that, when it comes to assessment blocks and you have multiple assessments to study for, break down each assignment into tasks and set mini deadlines for them to ensure that you're on track with all your assignments. For example, I had a stop motion project last year, so I would set reminders like have these three scenes shot by Thursday, have these 10 scenes edited by Friday, and so on. For more knowledge-based subjects, Things like revising one certain topic on one day and a different topic on another ensures that you aren't overwhelmed and that you can solely focus on revising that content. Breaking big things down into small accomplishable tasks makes things all the more easier and less overwhelming for you. Bad habit number three, stop studying wastefully. 
Writing 25 pages of notes that's all pretty and aesthetic is only gonna get you so far. First of all, you're wasting a lot of time making notes that you still have to remember and revise. And you leave yourself with little time to actually put what you've learned into practice and find and fill in those knowledge gaps. While it's always good to be thorough and know as much content as we can, we still need to take into consideration that we have other subjects to study for as well as our own life to live. So how can you study more efficiently? One of the things I can't stress enough is doing practice tests and past papers. Knowing the content is one thing, but applying it is what separates hardcore students from smart students. Pay attention to how the exam questions are styled, which parts of the topic are more relevant, or something as simple as seeing how long it takes for you to complete the actual test. Once you've gained a good grasp of the exam's overall content, do the practice test, see where you struggled, and then you can easily fill in those knowledge gaps and be wholly prepared for the actual test. This in conjunction with effective revision like palm cards, color coding, and online explanations will ensure that you cover more content in less time. Ask yourself questions like, are you a visual learner? Do you need to speak it out? Do you need to write it out? And then you can tailor your study routine to you, the subject, and the assessment itself. Once you've found your style, stick with it. Always be consistent and just run with it till the end. Bad habit number four, stop studying entirely alone. For me, studying alone isn't as effective as a proper group study. Finding a group of friends to study with allows you to more easily fill in those knowledge gaps amongst each other, and most importantly, make studying a lot more enjoyable. For starters, if you're genuinely stuck and struggling with the content, group study can help you build your own understanding and also get you rolling for your own revision. For me, I think teaching content is actually one of the best ways for me to revise and remember concepts, and I always hold mini classes with my friends before exams, um, just to have them ask me any questions of things they're unsure of and if I can answer them confidently and they can understand it easily then I know that I'm pretty well off for that certain topic. On the other hand, if you've already found your rhythm and know the direction to take for that assessment, I recommend finding other people that also have the same kind of knowledge level as you and then test each other. This is more so for filling in those final knowledge gaps before the actual test or exam, but what's important is that you find a group of people where you can get a mutual benefit from. Not a one-sided study session where either you or someone else isn't getting anything out of. <coughs> So, studying with your peers is a great way to boost your productivity and your motivation and can help you not only get on track, but stay on track the whole way through. Finally, bad habit number five. Stop burning yourself out. Many people think that more study hours equals better results, but this isn't true. Studying for hours on end isn't just mentally and physically draining, but you take the joy and motivation out of studying and you end up learning a lot less than you would have if you just had a solid, two hour intense study session. Take breaks when you need it and don't study for any longer than two hours without a break in between. If you notice your productivity is starting to slow down, your hand starts cramping or you just can't seem to think, take a break and give yourself time to recharge. But those two hours of study need to be a dedicated study session where you stick to one thing to focus on and do that one thing perfectly for those two hours. If this means studying for an exam, Pick one topic from the examinable content and ensure that by the end of those two hours, you know the topic off by heart from no knowledge gaps and you are absolutely confident. Because at least you know that after those two hours, you can relax and marinate and know that you can go into that test knowing for that piece of content, you're confident with it. You can answer those questions with no stress at all. Because trust me, I've had so many times where I've studied for like five hours on end every single day for a test still had my blanks doing it. Quality over quantity. So to recap, one, take care of the little things. Get good sleep, do your homework, and be proactive. Two, schedule realistically. Organize your workload into manageable tasks and don't over or under schedule. Three, study efficiently. Don't bother making long, pretty notes if you don't have the time for it. Complete past papers and pair that with different study techniques that you know work for you, the subject, and the assessment. Four, study in groups. Seek others' help if you're stuck and revise with people with similar knowledge levels to bridge knowledge gaps. Always ensure a mutual benefit. Five, take breaks. Work in short, intense intervals rather than having prolonged study sessions. Give yourself time to let the notes seep through. Ultimately, self-evaluation and acting on critiques is the best way to improvement. Look at your reports, see which tasks you have and haven't done as well in, and then ask yourself questions like, how much did I study for this? How did I study for this? 
Did I feel confident? What questions did I get wrong? The more understanding you have of yourself and your own strengths and weaknesses is what will gradually switch up your performance in school for the better. And the same thing applies to pretty much everything in life. Acting on self-criticality is self-improvement. So I wish you all the best of luck this academic year. We're all in this together. Um, we just have to push through and just do our best. So always just remember to be consistent, efficient, and proactive in your study. And that academic comeback will be yours. So take care, guys. Good luck. See you next time. Bye-bye.